Welcome to Top 10 Archive. There's something about the mysterious and unknown that fascinates us all. While some of the stories on our list may be hoaxes or fables, there may be enough evidence to speculate otherwise. From green-skinned children to a frostbite grave, here is our pick of 10 creepy unsolved mysteries. Number 10, The Green Children of Woolpit. The legend of the Green Children of Woolpit describes two siblings of unusual skin color who reportedly lived in the village of Woolpit in Suffolk, England, sometime in the 12th century. The children, a brother and sister, had the normal features of a human, other than the green pigment of their skin. They spoke in an unknown language, and the only food they would eat were beans. The boy died, and the girl would learn to eat other foods, and lost her green hue, adjusting to her new life as being rather loose and wanton in her conduct. As she learned to speak English, the girl explained that she and her brother came from St. Martin's Land, a subterranean world inhabited by green people. The only near timeline accounts of this story is contained in William of Newburgh's Historia Rerum Anglicarum and Ralph of Cogshill's Chronicum Anglicanum, written in about 1189 and 1220 respectively. While speculation abounds as to the truth of such an account, most believe it is a folk tale or that it is a misinterpreted account of a real event. Number 9. SS Urang Madan In February of 1947, near the Indonesian coastline, a series of distress calls were picked up by numerous ships and listening outposts, with each received dispatch becoming more alarming than the next. The calls came from a Dutch freighter known as the SS Urang Madan, and the first post received by rescue was the statement, all officers, including the captain, are dead, lying in chart room and bridge, possibly whole crew dead, followed by an indecipherable series of Morse code, and then the final message, I die. Through triangulation, the ship was discovered within the Straits of Malacca by the nearest rescue ship, the American 6507th Silver Star. What they discovered was the bodies of all officers and crew dead frozen horror in their faces and outstretched arms. Deciding to go back to their own ship, the SS Urang Madan sank into the ocean due to a mysterious explosion. To date, there are several theories about what happened on the SS Urang Madan. Number 8. Vampire Child Mercy Brown The Mercy Brown vampire incident that occurred in 1892 is one of the best documented cases of exhumation due to the lack of knowledge of tuberculosis and human paranoia. Several of the George and Mary Brown family from Exeter, Rhode Island died of tuberculosis, and friends and family believed it was due to an undead influence. The mother, Mary, died first of the disease in 1888, followed by their eldest daughter, Mary Olive. Two years later, in 1890, another daughter, Mercy, became sick and passed away. When, in 1891, their son, Edwin, contracted the disease, they decided to exhume the previous family members in order to find the undead influence. While the bodies of Mary and Mary Olive had been dug up from the ground and showed decomposition, their daughter, Mercy, was stored in a cold tomb waiting for burial due to the hard ground in colder climates. When they examined Mercy, liquid blood still remained in the heart and liver. Her hair and nails continued to grow, and her body wasn't in its original position. While experts speculate it was due to the cold weather that Mercy didn't decompose, they have no explanation for the other phenomenon. Number 7. Hopkinsville Goblins this event occurred in 1955 at the Sutton family farmhouse in Christian County, Kentucky over the span of one evening and into the following morning, where two families, consisting of 11 people, seven being adults, saw something strange in the sky, but thought nothing of it until a creature peeked in through the window of the house. Panicked by what they saw, a three feet or one meter tall creature with pointy ears, metallic skin, and clawed hands, the men grabbed their firearms and investigated. Taking their shot at rather close range, the bullets seemed to be deflected by some unknown shield, and one creature afterwards just floated to the ground. 
Scared, they barred themselves into the house just to hear the creatures skittering across the roof, peering in through the windows and causing chaos. Making a dash to their cars, they informed the police, who then investigated the house, finding scratch marks and hearing the same sounds the family had. Finding nothing else, the police departed. UFOologists regard this incident as one of the most documented and significant UFO cases in history. Number 6. Pollock Twins John and Florence Pollock led a rather normal life in Hexham, England before their two daughters, Jacqueline, who was six, and Joanna, 11, died on May 5, 1957, in a car accident. A year later, Florence would become pregnant with identical twins, giving birth to Gillian and Jennifer. Jennifer had a mark on her forehead, where Jacqueline's had a scar, and a birthmark on her waist, also the same as Jacqueline. At the age of three months, the family moved to Whitley Bay, and by the age of two, the girls started asking for toys they had never seen, but were once owned by Jacqueline and Joanna. Returning to Hexham, the girls also recognized places they had never been before, pointing out a school where they had played, but only Jacqueline and Joanna attended. While the similarities escalated, the girls were hysterical on seeing passing cars, screaming, the car is coming to get us. When the girls turned five, their memories suddenly vanished, and they went on to live normal lives. Dr. Ian Stevenson, a psychologist, studied the case, noting the unusually similar behaviors they had with their dead sisters. Number five, Hestallen Lights. Unexplained nocturnal lights observed in a seven and a half mile or 12 kilometer long Hestallen Valley in rural central Norway the Hestalen lights are of an unknown origin. They appeared at night and seemed to float through and above the valley. The lights are described as white, yellow, or red that appear above and below the horizon. The duration of this phenomenon may be from a few seconds to longer than an hour. At times, the lights can be seen traveling at very fast speeds, while at other times they slowly sway back and forth. These unusual lights have been reported in the region since at least the 1930s, with high activity occurring between December 1981 and mid-1984, where the lights were observed 15 to 20 times per week. Since 1983, there has been ongoing scientific research, often named Project Hestalen, that was initiated by UFO Norge and UFO Sweden in hopes of finding clues as to what causes this phenomenon. Despite ongoing research, there is no convincing explanation for these events, but there are several working hypotheses. Number 4. Oakville Blobs On August 7, 1994, in Oakville, Washington, during a rainstorm, blobs of translucent, gelatinous substance, half the size of a grain of rice each, fell at a farm home of Sonny Barcliffe. Shortly afterwards, Barcliffe's mother, Dottie Hearn, had to go to the hospital, suffering from dizziness and nausea. Barcliffe and a friend also suffered minor bouts of fatigue and nausea after handling the blobs. Several attempts were made to identify the blobs, with Barcliffe initially asking his mother's doctor, Dr. David Little, to run tests on the substance at the hospital. Little reported that it contained human white blood cells. Barcliffe also managed to persuade Mike Osweiler of the Washington State Department of Ecology's Hazardous Materials Spill Response Unit to examine the substance, concluding that the blobs contained cells with no nuclei. Number 3. Who Put Bella in the Witch Elm? Who Put Bella in the Witch Elm is a graffito that started appearing soon after a 1941 unsolved murder. On April 18, 1943, Four boys from Sturbridge were poaching in Hagley Woods, which was part of a private estate belonging to Lord Cobham. One boy climbed a tree and looked down the hollow stump to find a human skull. As they were on the land illegally, they left the skull and returned home without mentioning the discovery. The youngest out of the group of boys felt uneasy about the situation and told his parents. When police checked the tree trunk, they found the remains of a complete human skeleton, along with a shoe, a gold wedding ring, and fragments of clothing. 
After further investigation, a severed hand was found buried in the ground near the tree. The body was sent to a forensic examiner, Professor James Webster, who determined it was a female and that she had been dead for 18 months, placing the death around October 1941. To date, nobody knows who put Bella in the Witch Elm. Number 2. Overton Bridge Overton Bridge was completed in 1895 and designed by civil engineer H.E. Milner, located in West Dumbartonshire, Scotland. The bridge has attracted international attention due to the number of dogs who have reportedly leaped to their deaths from it. Studies have shown that since the 1950s, numerous dogs have leapt from the bridge at a rate of about one per year. The only linking factors for the unexplained events are that the dogs jumped from the same side of the bridge in clear weather and they are breeds with long snouts. Initially, canine psychologist Dr. David Sands examined sight, smell, and sound factors, but after eliminating what a dog could potentially see and hear on the bridge, David Sexton, an animal habitat expert, focused on scent following the discovery of mice and mink in the undergrowth on the side where the dogs leapt from, concluding through tests conducted that the scent of mink was what was luring the dogs to leap off the bridge Local hunter John Joy disputes this fact, having resided in the area 50 years and stating with absolute certainty that there were no mink in the area. Number 1. Dyadlov Pass In January of 1959, 23-year-old Igor Dyadlov led a group of eight young, experienced Soviet hikers comprised of seven men and two women into the Ural Mountains attempting to reach Mount Orteton from the small settlement of Vizai. It would take more than three months to locate all nine of their bodies, found six miles or 10 kilometers from their destination, and in a forest just one mile or two kilometers from their campsite made on the slopes of Kolatsyako. Investigating the campsite, it appears they left in a hurry, cutting their tents from the inside and leaving essential gear to survive. Some bodies were found without clothes, while others had garments piled on from their friends. Two had fractured skulls, two had major chest fractures, and one hiker was missing her tongue. But the majority died of hypothermia. What makes this case even more puzzling was the fact that there was no other indication of animals or people approaching their camp, and that some of the clothing found on the victims were saturated with radiation. To this day, no scientific explanation for their deaths have been achieved. Loyal Archivers, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, then right now help us grow even faster and use the share links below to repost and share this video with all of your family and friends on your favorite social media sites. Do you have an idea for a future top 10 video? Let us know in the comments section below. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and our website, top10archive.net.